Happy New Year and welcome to another update on the DIY BMS. This is the first video for 2021. Six months have passed since the last video and a lot of upgrades and improvements have been made in that time. Later in this video I'm going to show you the next version of the controller and a sneak peek at the current shunt module that's currently work in progress. But before we do that, if you're new to this project and this YouTube channel, welcome. Please like and subscribe to keep this project going. DIY BMS is a battery management system. You will need a BMS if you're thinking of building your own battery for powering your house using lithium cells, very similar to a Tesla Powerwall. The BMS has a controller and module devices, and you normally have a single controller and one module for each series cell in the battery. However, this isn't a battery building video, so let me explain some of the new features and changes I've been working on over the last six months. Some of the changes are behind the scenes, so let's cover these off first. First of all, there's support for the 4 megabyte Wemos controller, so you no longer need to buy the Pro version. I've rewritten a lot of the code in the modules, so uh, that improves the communication and adds a lot, a lot of new features. And there's also massive improvements on the MQTT integration. Uh, so that now, now reports the number of banks, the cells, uptime, pack voltages, errors, status, um, and also the, um, the status of the rules when they uh, fire or not. I'd like to thank uh, Daniel Romer from the uh, DIY Tech and Repair channel for his help on the MQTT changes. Uh, take a look at his channel for similar content and to learn more about battery building. So enough of the boring bullet points, let's take a look at the changes to the web interface. On the main page the graph has several improvements. Each bank now shows in a different colour and the average cell voltage is also shown. There is a, an experimental 3D graph. Uh, this might be useful for people who have large battery banks as it gets quite difficult to view all the data on screen at once. Let me know in the comments if you think this could be useful to you. I've also improved the error handling and the warning messages and these now appear across the top of the page. A frequently requested feature is the customised graph voltage scale. So you can now change this in the settings. DIY BMS now supports up to 100 modules in a combination of 32 in series and 16 in parallel. So for example, you could build a 13S 7P battery using 91 modules. In multiple bank configurations, there is no longer a need to assign each module to a bank, as this is now automatically done. Each module can now count how much current is bypassed and give a total milliamp hour count per cell. This allows you to find which cells are balancing the most. You can see if the module and controllers are running the correct version of code and a warning is shown if the versions don't match. Relay rules now have hysteresis, uh, so this allows you to set a high and low value for each rule, which helps to avoid the relays from switching on and off rapidly. And a new rule is also available for monitoring the module temperatures. You could use this to drive a fan when the module is going to bypass to uh, cool it down. The code for this latest version is in GitHub at the usual address which is on the screen now. I've started to explore the use of GitHub Actions, so hopefully in the coming weeks I can show you how to program the DIY BMS without needing to, to install the platform I.O. and the Visual Studio Code systems. Uh, GitHub will automatically compile the code for us. However, for now, please follow my previous video on how to program the controller and the modules using platform I.O. Remember to reprogram all the modules, otherwise the new code won't work. And you also need to make sure you disconnect the modules from the battery before you program them. If you need help and support, please visit the Open Energy Monitor Forum. Uh, the link's on the screen now. As promised at the start of the video, here's a preview of the new controller I've been working on. Progress has been slower than I would have liked. Real work and home life often gets in the way. On screen, you can see the 3D model from KiCad. The new controller is physically larger than the previous and incorporates the relays and outputs on the same board. A few months ago, I opened a Patreon account and I didn't actively tell people about this, but I've been amazed at the generosity of people who found the link and supported the project through Patreon. As a thank you, I'm going to add all the Patreon supporters' names to, to the silk screen on the new controller PCB. I expect the controller will be released at the end of January once I've got some more testing completed. So if you want your name on the back, please support me using the link on the screen and in the description below. This is what the controller looks like for real. This is an early prototype, so I've moved a few things around and you can see some of the bodge wires I've had to add to manually fix a few things. But the main features are there's external power input, mechanical relays, electronic relays, an AVR ISP program interface, RS485. There's four separate inputs or outputs, uh, the CAN bus support, an SD card for login, a touchscreen, a TFT screen if you need it, and a RGB status LED. 
The controller is fully compatible with the existing cell modules, so there isn't any need to replace those. Most of the controller components are also optional, so if you don't want the screen, for example, you don't have to install it. I'll do another video once the board is released with some more details. It's also designed to fit into a DIN rail case like this. The controller should make it much easier to program the modules with its inbuilt programmer, uh, which is connected using a simple ribbon cable like this. The primary reason I made the new controller was to allow me to interface to external devices like inverters and chargers using CAN bus or RS-485 Modbus protocols. This is where the current monitoring shunt comes in. This is a RS-485 Modbus device which uses isolated communications between the shunt and controller. It's a standalone voltage and current monitor and it currently supports up to 60 volt DC and the current is uh, variable depending on what shunt is installed. Well, that just about wraps up this video. If you're able to, please support the project on uh, Patreon and check out the uh, forum for help and advice. All the links are in the uh, description below. Thanks for watching.